Hi, my name is Naranjan Kalyanasundaram and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to render material ID passes to a single file when using mental ray. Now as you can see I have a pretty basic scene here, just a bunch of primitives. So the traditional approach to rendering uh, material ID passes has been to create a separate render layer for each pass and apply solid surface shaders to it as I've done here. Now the problem with this is that when you render your file even if you use a multi-channel format like OpenEXR you still have each pass rendered to a separate file like this. And notice I have used EXR format here. So I'll be showing you how you can render all of these material ID passes to a single EXR file. If you're lucky enough to use V-Ray you don't have to worry about all this but if you're working on mental ray here's what you do. Uh, select all the objects you want in your material ID pass, create a new layer, let's call it mat ID layer, and what we need to do is assign a different surface shader to each of our objects. The actual color doesn't matter, so let's just open up a surface shader here, um, just pick any random color, uh, yeah there we go, I'll call this label shader 1 and I have 8 objects in my scene so I need 8 shaders 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 now let's just open this up here and go in and assign random colors to each one okay so we have 8 shaders and 8 objects we just need to apply each of these shaders to one of the objects let's open the outliner here select the first one and apply go ahead and do that on the rest of the objects okay so we have a bunch of randomly colored objects here and this is where the fun begins. let's go to render setup change our render to mental ray and I'll just use uh, JPEG for the sake of this demonstration now in passes you'll notice that we have four custom options this is what we're going to capitalize on to create our mat ID passes. So we need a custom color pass. And I have eight objects. I'm going to stick to primary colors for my material ID passes. If you have a compositing workflow that supports secondary colors, you can go ahead and incorporate that in here. So I have eight objects, which means I need uh, three passes. Okay, let's take a look at these attributes in here. Um, the main one you have to worry about is the number of channels. You have one, two, one, three, and four. One is just a grayscale pass. Three is RGB. Four is RGB plus alpha. Um, we can just use three. We don't need alpha. And I'll call this mat ID one. Just go ahead and rename the rest there. Okay, and let's just go ahead and associate the first pass. So for now all of these passes are just blank they don't have any data in them so we need a way to push data into those passes now if you look under mental rays miscellaneous shaders here in hypershade you'll find the last four nodes are called right to buffer nodes and take a look at these four passes again each of our custom passes here is associated with a right to buffer node so we need to use these nodes to push data into our custom pass. Now since we use custom color, or we need to use a right to color buffer. Okay, now the attributes here. Custom color pass. This is where we choose which of our custom color passes this particular right to buffer node transfers data to. Um, I'll use mat ID one. Now make sure the right operation is set to add and under evaluation trigger, make sure the mode is always. I'll explain this in detail later in the video. These should be the defaults, but you know, just double check anyways. So let's take a look at the connections available for this right to color buffer node. Open up my node editor, uh, map the connections. Okay, so as you can see, our mat ID pass is already connected to the render pass. We did that over here. Oh. Okay, so we have a color input and an evaluation pass-through input. Now, we need to connect one shader to the evaluation pass-through, and whenever that shader is being rendered, 
that'll trigger our right to buffer node, which will replace that shader with whatever we provide in the color input. It can be a bit confusing. Let me show you. Uh, let's take our first label shader here and connect the out color to evaluation pass through. And let's go ahead and create a new surface shader. Let's make this pure red. So this is going to be our matte red. Okay. So our matte red shader, the out color needs to go to color. Let's just remount that a bit. Okay. So what happens is during render time, whenever the label shader is being evaluated, that's going to trigger our right to color buffer. And what happens is this label shader is replaced with our matte red shader. And that data is sent to our matte ID pass. So all of this is only going to affect our ID pass, none of the other passes. You know what, let me just do a batch render and show you how it turns out. This is what Maya rendered out here. This is the master beauty. And this is our custom pass. Now notice how only the sphere was rendered in red. Okay, so we need to go back and do this for blue and green channels. All right, so let's open up the hyper shade. I don't think we need the node editor anymore. We can just do all connections here. Utilities, there we go. Okay, oh, let's rename this node first. We'll call this right to mat ID one R because it's for the red channel. Now let's duplicate this node. Notice in the custom color pass, we can select the same material ID pass and notice it gets connected right away. So what's happening is data from both of these right to color buffer nodes are sent to the same material ID pass. And this is where the right operation comes in. Remember I told you to set it to add. You can also have no operation, multiply or overwrite. Now, usually add provides a kind of bleached output. That's not going to happen in this case because the data in the, these two buffer nodes are mutually exclusive. They're not overlapping, so you'll get a proper output. Now, our first node handled the red, so let's make this one handle green. Let's take the second label shader and connect the out color to evaluation pass through. Duplicate the matte red and change it to matte green. Take the out color of this matte green, connect it to color. And do this again for blue. Duplicate the right to color buffer node. Go in and change the name. Associate with matte ID 1. It's connected. Take your next label shader, out color to evaluation pass through. Duplicate your matte surface shader. Change this to a matte blue. Change, rename it. Out color to color. And this right here is all we need for our first matte ID pass. I'll do another batch render and show you the results. Here's the output of that batch render. Again, this is your master beauty. And this is our first material ID pass. So as you can see, the appropriate objects have been substituted with the required surface shaders. So now we just have to go back and do the same thing for the other two material ID passes. Remember to change this color pass to matte ID 2 now because we don't want to override the previous one. And we can go ahead and connect the same shaders. We don't have to recreate those. Okay. That is our second material ID pass. Now for the third one. Associate with number three. Okay, and I think that's it. We have eight nodes, one for each object. Now we can go ahead and do a final batch render. Make sure to associate those last, those remaining two material ID passes. And let's go ahead and use an EXR format this time. Open EXR, go to quality and make sure the frame buffer is set to 32 bit float. Okay, I'll do a batch render and we'll see how it goes.
Okay, so it finished rendering and I've loaded up the EXR file here in Nuke. So let's just take a look at the channels. As you can see, this is the um, Master Beauty, which we don't need. Um, here are our three material ID passes. Okay, looks good. Great, and we can separate the green and the red and all that stuff. Okay, now unfortunately, since we used a separate layer for the material ID pass, that alone gets rendered out as an EXR file. If we include the master layer, that creates a second EXR file. So unfortunately, there's no way to combine both of them directly during render time. But you know, the way I see it, two EXR files is a lot better than four. And that's it. I forgot to explain how the evaluation trigger works. Well, basically, this attribute determines what triggers your right to color buffer node. And we used always, but there are two other options, disabled and pass through only. Now, obviously, disabled is going to permanently disable your node, so you won't get any output. Now, let's take a look at the differences between the other two. This is what we did in always mode. We had a material applied to an object, and we used the right to color buffer node to replace our old material with a new one and render the output to custom render pass. Okay? Now let's take a look at a different situation. Let's say we have a texture applied to a shader and we have that shader applied to an object. Now if we want to replace one texture with a new one, yes, we can use the right to color buffer node, but if we set it to evaluation pass through, we need to insert this node between these two, like this. So we have the texture applied to evaluation pass through and notice we have an out evaluation pass through here. Now that output is connected to the shader. So the signal literally passes through our right to color buffer node. Now the difference is when you're using evaluation pass through mode, it's not enough if the texture is evaluated. You have to have a signal passing through the right to color buffer node and into your new shader. Only then will your right to color node be triggered. And of course, it replaces the old shader with an old texture with a new one and puts that into the custom render pass. But notice the difference between pass through only and always mode. Over here, we only have input signals going. We don't have anything transferring through the output. That's fine for always mode, but you need to have both input and output for the pass through only mode. So let's say you have a scene with a tree and you want to show a transition from summer to autumn. And let's say that this is your tree leaf, and this is your leaf uh, shader. This is your summer texture, and you can use the autumn texture over here. So in that case, what happens is all of your passes are rendered with the summer leaf texture, and this pass alone contains information about the autumn leaf texture. So you can take care of the transition in compositing. And that's it. Once again, my name is Niranjan Kalyan Sundaram, and thank you for watching.